Okay, some of you mentioned that you liked the super view mode on the GoPro because you can see a lot wider field of view. Some people like it, some people don't. I'll use it occasionally. Um, getting started here putting on nitrogen, so I want you to be able to kind of see almost as much as I can see when I'm going here. So what we're doing is we're just squirting nitrogen in between the corn rows. We're injecting it in the ground, digging a little crack with those coulters and shooting the nitrogen right down into the ground in that crack. Um, I'm using a hydraulic pump on the side dress applicator to produce the pressure and the volume needed to inject the liquid into the ground. And then it's controlled with this Raven flow meter. It has a master on off switch and then three different sections so I can shut off the right, center, and left sections of the boom individually. Right now uh, I'm running in no-till corn. Uh, I'm putting on 30 gallons per acre. Right now we're putting 32% UAN nitrogen down, which uh, to try to simplify the math, a gallon of this uh, liquid weighs about 11 pounds and then 32% of that is nitrogen. So for every gallon we're putting down, we're getting three and a half pounds of nitrogen. Right now I'm entering a different management zone. So I'm gonna flip my rate controller over to 40 gallons per acre. Where we are right now is the field that we actually purchased last year and added onto this field. So this was corn last year it's corn again this year and the reason that there's a higher rate of nitrogen going on here you can take a credit a nitrogen credit from the soybeans that you harvest from last year so when you're planting corn on soybean residue you don't have to put as much nitrogen down with that corn crop because the soybeans are a legume and they actually fix nitrogen in the soil so we're taking a nitrogen credit from the soybean crop last year uh, over here on the corn side, we're having to put a little bit more nitrogen down. We're putting down just about 10 gallons more. And I'm having to go slower because it's extremely rough here. We actually are switching the direction of the rows. This farm was actually farmed east and west previously, and now we're farming it north and south to hook it on to the farm that we've been farming all along that's right next to it. Seven miles per hour is about the top speed I can do mainly due to the fact that we're bouncing over the old corn rows from last year. We did one pass of tillage this way in the spring and another pass of tillage this way to try to get it evened out, but it's still rough. And you can see right here the difference in the color of the corn. This is where we're getting into the bean stubble. So I'll flip the rate back to rate one, which is 30, and increase my speed, shift up to 14th gear, and we'll get going 11 miles per hour. So that's what we're doing in this field. All right, back into linear mode here. We're gonna fold up and go home to get more nitrogen. So there's a tiny little part of the wing that folds up out on the end first. Then the rest of it folds up. Now I know someone's gotta be wondering why I still have 200 gallons of liquid in the tank and I drove home to get more. The reason is I would not have been able to quite make another round on those long rows without running out. And then I would have had to drive part way back across the field and fill that gap in. And also, for some reason, if you run this thing dry, it is really hard to get the pump primed and you end up with some spotty application when you get back to going again. So I like to play it safe, come back home and get it before I need it. Just take this cap off of here and that's where we plug in the hose. Open the valves, there's one underneath. And this valve going into the pump. And we're ready to roll. Well, 
it sounded like it was going to rain big time. It looked like it was going to rain big time last night, but look under the tractor. It barely rained at all. Didn't even wet the ground underneath the tractor. <laughs> so I'm sure there'll be more side dressing done today. Should be fit in a few hours, I'm guessing. All right, back at it again, side dressing, putting nitrogen on the corn. Um, that thing over there is not supposed to exist. It just came out of nowhere. And I'm really hoping it doesn't rain me out. If it moves to the Northeast, I'm in big trouble. But time will tell. This might be a really short day. This dog's making me nervous. He keeps running right next to the applicator. I really don't want to hurt him. I think I might stop here in front of the house and uh, see if I can get him to go home. I mean, just a little bit ago, he was running right next to the Coulters. It was kind of scaring me. Dog, you're scaring me. Yeah, that's, uh, that's making me real nervous. Well, I've been watching this storm form up on the radar and it does not look good. And I just got a call from my dad who's about 25 miles west of us and he said it's the worst rain he's ever driven through. So I'm probably going to make another round or two and try to get out of here before I get mudded up. Well, I lied. I ended up getting that whole load off and there wasn't any rain yet and now I've only got just about 20 acres left to finish this field. So I'm going to try to finish it, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think that storm right there is probably going to get here when I've got about five acres left and I'm going to be really upset. <laughs> but we're going to try because the last two or three storms that have come up on the radar have dissipated or gone around us. So I'd feel pretty foolish sitting at home if it never rained. Let me just say it's days like today that I'm supremely thankful for technology. First of all, auto steer so that I can keep going straight down the rows and not knock down any corn while there's so much to pay attention to. And secondly, that I can have an iPad in the tractor with the radar cycling away, telling me when that is gonna get here <laughs> or giving me a good idea. Well, we did end up getting some rain last night, but it was just the weirdest thunderstorm night I can remember in a long time. It was so spotty, pretty small cells, but extremely powerful cells. I'm sitting next to a field right here that we farm. And if you look at it, you would think, ah, this field probably got half an inch to an inch of rain. Really nothing out of the ordinary. We're gonna go right up over this hill here and you're gonna see a completely different world. So here's our field. I can actually walk around out here without mud sticking to my shoes. And the corn, you can tell it did kind of have a rough night. Um, there's a leaf here and there. This one here is kind of damaged by the hail just a little bit. But overall, it looks to be in great shape. Now let's go for a drive just over the hill. It's going to be crazy. All right, once again, just for reference, there's the hog barns where we were looking at our field earlier. Look at this. That's terrible. So much water and so much hail. That corn is just beaten down so badly. All the corn stalks. Wow. This is one operation where the GPS really shines because I don't have to steer going down these rows. The RTK guidance did such a good job with the planter that all I have to do is turn around on the ends and when I get about halfway around the turn I just push this auto steer button and it guides the tractor right back into the row that I need to go into, drop it down, turn the switch on get sped back up to 11 miles an hour and we're off to the races, no hands. So back in the day when you would have to do side dressing or cultivating with no auto guidance, 
it was very mentally intense. It took a lot of concentration to stay on the road. And you want to be able to look back at your machine often to make sure there's nothing wrong, no leaks around the pump or hoses blowing off or anything happening. So if you were looking back at your implement going 11 miles an hour and you were steering manually, by the time you'd look back forward again, you would probably be running over corn. I mean, I would be. I'm not that good. Um, so the auto guidance is just really, really nice for this. All right, I'm done with all the higher volume rate application fields. So I have to change out the orifices and they look, they look like this. It's a little stainless steel orifice. This one is a number eight. This is what I'm gonna be putting in and I'm gonna be taking out the number 15s. They look quite similar in size, but well, look at that. Now they don't. Now you can see the size difference quite dramatically. Anyway, this is how we maintain the proper pressure to squirt the nitrogen down in that crack in the ground that the coulters are creating. If you just dribble it on top and it doesn't make it down into the crevice, it'll actually evaporate. A lot of it'll just gas off into the air and you'll lose all of your benefit from putting it down. So we want to be running the right size nozzle so that we can travel at the appropriate speed. Okay, just gonna spin this cap off. And the spring and the check ball might fall out with it. Yep, here they come. That's just to keep the nitrogen from dripping out as you're turning around on the end rows and getting all over the corn leaves. So, just gonna push this old tip out and uh, rubber washer will come with it. Clean the cap up a little bit in the water here. Drop in a number eight, rubber washer, the spring, the check ball, get it all shoved back up in there, and snug it back up, and we're off to the races. We just got 14 or more of those to do. <laughs> so you'll notice that there's two tips on the outside row. That's because there's only 15 coulters. Uh, because we're going in between an even number of rows. So we've got an odd number of colder applicators. So the outside row has a full rate nozzle and a half rate nozzle. So this is actually a 15 and this is an eight. So we're gonna leave the eight in, take the 15 out, and we're gonna put a number four nozzle in that. That's a really tiny nozzle. But that gives a one and a half times the rate on the outside row. And so then in between your planter passes, you'll have one slot between the rows that doesn't get any nitrogen but you've put one and a half times the rate on the either side of the those rows so that's how you handle the odd number of rows into an even uh number of corn rows does that make any sense probably not sorry so we're working on the fields that got manure last fall and this is a little bit more complicated we just got our soil tests back yesterday Every spring we have our agronomists come around and do spring soil nitrate tests to kind of check up and see where we're at with nitrogen on the cornfields that got manure last fall. The reason is when you apply commercial nitrogen fertilizer like anhydrous ammonia or 32% UAN like I'm putting on right now, you know exactly how much nitrogen you're putting on and it's pretty stable. As long as you get it in the ground correctly, you get a rain and you don't leave it all on top and have it evaporate or have the uh, knife crack open up and gas off the anhydrous when you're putting out ammonia. But with hog manure, it's a little bit more uncertain. We do take tests every fall. So before we spread the manure, we take samples of the manure and send it into a lab and get it analyzed to find out how much nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus and everything is in it. However, the process of stirring the manure in the pits and hosing it out on the fields is not perfect. Uh, you don't end up with a perfectly homogeneous spread. And also, the nitrogen in the manure is a little less reliable. So in the springtime, we like to double check with these soil nitrate tests and uh, figure out if we're on the right track. A lot of times we end up having to apply just a little bit more than we planned on, depending on the type of year we're having. 
if it was hot when you applied the hog manure in the fall, if you got it applied early, and uh, it was wet maybe, and you didn't get a chance to get it chisel plowed in right away, uh, you can lose some nitrogen that way. It'll just kind of evaporate into the air. Depending on how wet of a spring it is, some of the nitrogen can be down below that level where the crops can actually access it at this point in the season. So it's a good idea to check. Make sure you know what you're doing before you go out there and spend the money. Not having enough nitrogen is definitely a situation that can limit your crop potential big time. In fact, it's something that you can often see from the road as you're driving by a field. If somebody forgets to turn the applicator on for a small stretch in the field, that'll be pretty visible. It'll be yellow and short and stunted and sick looking compared to the rest of the field. So it's definitely something you wanna get right. On the flip side, over applying, putting down too much nitrogen, although it won't really hurt the crop, definitely hurts your return on investment. This is an expensive fertilizer to put down. It's not cheap. So we definitely don't want to over apply. We don't want to waste nitrogen. We don't want to waste money. This is a business. We're trying to pencil in a profit for every acre and it gets increasingly hard as commodity prices are low and input prices of everything that we're putting in the field are not low. Well, here comes that tropical storm they were talking about. Might be done here pretty soon. Well, I stopped to grab some lunch and let the first round of sprinkles pass by. They're not passing. I'd say we're done for a while. Just a quick reminder, this is exactly why we have waterways in our field. Where the water dumps out of the ditch, that grass holds the soil in place, keeps everything where it needs to be. We've got about an inch and three quarters at this point. It's been a few hours now since it started raining. It didn't come fast enough to really do any uh, major damage, but it's definitely, everything that's falling out of the sky right now is running off because the ground is completely saturated. The tile can't take it any faster than it's going. It'll definitely be a few days before we're back in the tractor seat, that's for sure. I'd like to say thanks for being here. If you have any questions about anything you saw in this video, just feel free to drop me a comment in the comment section below. Just keep scrolling down and you'll find it. I'll do my best to answer them as quick as I can get around to it. And if it's something that everybody's asking, I'll probably hit on it in a future video. Thanks for riding along. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you next time.